that leaves three problems. Uh, they're not really related like the problems in the previous videos were, but let's take them one by one. Problem number 10. What's all this? There we are. So first observation, x squared minus one is continuous. It's a uh, quadratic. Two x plus a is continuous. It's a linear. So the only way we can not be continuous is if when we're moving from this continuous function to the second continuous function, we have a jump. So even though I phrase this in terms of being continuous for all real numbers, the only real number we're really concerned about is one. This is definitely continuous everywhere else. The way we've been approaching these piecewise defined functions um, has been to use one sided limits. To be continuous at one, g of one has to equal the limit as x approaches one of g of x. g of one, we can compute, it's not zero though, sorry about that, or at least we don't know if it's zero. One is greater than or equal to one. So G of one is two plus A. Two times one is two. For this limit to exist, The one-sided limits have to exist and be equal. If we approach one from the left, we're in this piece. And this limit, this is continuous, it's a polynomial. We can just stick one in there and get to zero. And the limit as we approach one from the right, well, we're in this piece. Again, this is continuous. To take the limit as we approach one, we just stick one in there. And for this limit to exist, these have to be equal. So A has to be negative two. So for this limit to exist, A has to be negative two. And then this left-hand limit is zero. This right-hand limit, two plus negative two, is also zero. So this two-sided limit exists and is zero. And if A is negative two, then two plus A, I got a little ahead of myself earlier, but now we can say that this is zero. And G of one does equal 
equal this limit. So if A is negative two, this is continuous at one. Let me see. We did not do, I confess, all of these in class. I think we felt that it was getting a little tedious. We did those. And we did these. So if we approach negative one from the left, Y is coming down to one. We approach negative one from the right. Y is coming down to negative two. The one-sided limits aren't equal. So the two-sided limit doesn't exist. And if the two-sided limit doesn't exist, it's not continuous at negative one. It's not continuous at one either, because f yes, f of one is a two. But when we approach one from the left, y is going up to one. And when we approach one from the right, y is going up to one. So I guess I said we were skipping problems, but we more or less ended up doing these after all. When we approach one from the left and from the right, the limit is one. And this limit does not equal f of one. On the other hand, at two, nothing like that is occurring. Left-hand limit is zero. The right-hand limit is zero. f of two is zero. So f of two equals the limit. Thirteen isn't really a calculus problem, but there's a history behind this. The first year I taught this course, I um, put an average rate of change problem on the final exam. It was supposed to be a gimme, but in fact, almost everyone ended up missing it for some reason. So since then, because this is material that you should know, I've been sticking these problems on hourly tests to try to encourage students to know this material. And the average rate of change formula says to subtract the y coordinates and subtract the x coordinates. And let me, I'll, I, I'll pause the recording while I do this on my calculator. So that ended up being this negative one nine six three point four. And the numerator is the number of deaths, the denominator is years. So our units are deaths per year.